Good evening. It's time for the Iman Report. It is Saturday night, March 27th. Hope everybody had a good night. We are recapping UFC 260, Miocic versus Naganu 2. If you like what you see, give this channel a big like, and please be kind and hit that subscribe button. In the main event, we saw a much improved fighter in Francis Naganu. He knocks out Stipe Miocic in the second round. And now we have a new UFC heavyweight champion in Francis Naganu. Man, did he watch the film from the first fight. He was not fooled. He improved. And man, he was good tonight. This was the best Naganu I've seen in a long time. After what happened to him in the first fight against Stipe, that rattled him. He, of course, after that, lost to Derek Lewis. Sadly, I, I, at some point, I think maybe this year or next year, we could see Lewis and Naganu. Naganu looked for some atonement to that loss to Derek Lewis at some point. After he fights one John Bones Jones in what could be a very blockbuster fight. But yeah, for a... But with Naganu... This is full circle for him after uh, this is a this is truly atonement for Francis Naganu. He lost to Stipe, then he lost to Derek Lewis, then he went on a run after that. He beat Curtis Blades, Cain Velazquez, Junior Dos Santos, Jarzino Rosenstruck, and now Stipe. And now he's champion. And he could be champion for a long time. For years to come if all things work out. Next will be for him John Jones. No doubt about it. As for Stipe Miocic, he's one of the longer reigning champions in the UFC at heavyweight. Question is, does he want to continue his career at this point? Honestly, I thought maybe for him he had one or two fights left in the UFC. Now that he's lost the belt, and lost possibly a very lucrative fight against John Jones. Does he want to continue his career? He does. He's a firefighter when he's not fighting, anyways. And he's up there in age. So could 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 retirement really be on the? Realistically, retirement could be on the table for Stipe Miocic. He really does not have a whole lot left to prove in the UFC. He could look to seek a rubber match at some point against Stipe after, against Naganu after John Jones and Naganu battle it off, they could, a rubber match might be the only thing left for Stipe. And other than that, it's, or a money fight with John Jones. Those are the two options left, but I don't think, there's a real possibility that we, this could be the last of Stipe in the octagon. He's been there, done that. There's not a lot left for for Stipe Miocic to prove in the octagon, so there's going to be some talks. I think there's going to be some talks about retirement, and it'll be interesting to see where Stipe's career goes from here. But for Naganu, it's his night. He's the new champion. And for him, it's going to be big money, a big money fight with John Jones. Who knows where? But it should be a big pay-per-view draw. And Naganu could become a brand name if he if he is the next one to defeat John Jones later this year. That is going to be a very intriguing and fun fight. But we've seen the improvement tonight in Francis Naganu. No doubt about it. In the co-main event, we Vicente Luque submits. Tyron Woodley and Jason Herzog gave Woodley every opportunity to stay in this fight. But it, but to no avail that Luque becomes the victor of this one. And look at this. I think Luque is two or three fights away from a title shot at this point. But he is going to get a big name after this. He's going to get likely someone right right on the cusp of the top five contender. That is what should be next for Vicente Luque. And I think that could be 
number six. Luke A is seven. Luke A will probably move up to seven as of tomorrow as of Monday. Fight the number six guy in Michael Chiesa. That will be a very extremely that will be a very entertaining fight. That could be a banger between Luke A and Chiesa. That is the matchup to make. As for Tyron Woodley, I think unfortunately it's the end of the road for his career in the at least in the UFC. It might be time for him to consider retirement. But unfortunately, Woodley's just not the same fighter. But he went down swinging and that's all he can do. But certainly they could look Bellator as a possibility or now the names are going to the PFL. And I think the PFL is maybe... There could be some good good opportunities for Tyron Woodley in the PFL. There's guy a rematch with Rory McDonald and some other names. I think PFL is the, the league, is the promotion now signing the big names. He could, if he wanted to fight Anthony Pettis in the PFL. But I think, honestly, he's not coming back. Now his contract is up, and that I don't see it. I really, unless he want, if he comes back, he's likely going to be serving as a gatekeeper to younger fighters. And I don't see Tyron Woodley in that role, but he's lost four in a row. And I think, I, I really do think it's the end of the line for Tyron Woodley. Go enjoy Bellator, go enjoy PFL. Your career is just unfortunately not here in the UFC. The fight before that. Sugar, Sean O'Malley, beats, knocks out Tyron, T -T -Al Thomas Almeida in the third round in a fight where really Sean O'Malley should have finished it in the first round. He won, unfortunately, he was looking for the highlight reel knockout, and that just doesn't exactly show high fight IQ. This was a win, but not necessarily a win that's going to move you that far up in the in the food chain as in terms of a next fight. I am very what was very disappointing about that fight is seeing the lack of fight IQ out of Sugar Sean O'Malley. So I think what could be next for Sean O'Malley is maybe he fights a fighter, an experienced fighter who has a better fight IQ. And I do think O'Malley is a, a top 15 fighter. I don't know if he's a top 10 fighter. But, he, I, but he's got to have better fight IQ if he wants to get to the next level. Or he's going to end up like No Love. No Love's one of those fighters that is a great fighter. But he sometimes just lacks the fight IQ. And that's where the problem is with, with Sugar Sean O'Malley. And I think next for O'Malley, might be a guy like Jimmy Rivera. A guy like Jimmy Rivera or Rafael Asensau is what should be next for, is really what should be next for Sugar Sean O'Malley. Jimmy Rivera, still a good good fighter. He's got better fight IQ. So I do think this is a fight where maybe you're going to see high, higher, where Sean O'Malley will be up against higher fight IQ. And I want to see what adjustments O'Malley could make against a guy like Rivera who does have a f higher fight IQ than Almeida. Granted, Granted that Rivera is on a bit of a losing streak. Same thing with Rafael Asensio. Those are two guys that I really think should be next for Sugar Sean O'Malley. An experienced guy that's got a better fight IQ. I want to see O'Malley work on that fight IQ. He's, he's, that's where his, his weakness is at this point. As for Thomas Almeida, 
that's four in a row, one in five in your last six. Adios, you're gone. I think Almeida is going to be cut after this one. And he should be cut. Four losses in a row. There's only one, one, one win out of your last six. That's going to get you cut from the promotion. Fight before that, it was a fun fight in the women's MMA. With Miranda Maverick beating Jillian Robertson via unanimous decision. Maverick went, is now 2-0 and oh in the UFC. And is looking like a fighter that is... Looking like a hot prospect right now in the women's... in the women's 125 division. Robertson was probably on the on the the, the cusp of the rankings. Yeah, she was 15. So what could be next for Miranda Maverick? I think you give her the winner of Antonina Shevchenko and Andrea Lee. That's what should be next for, for Maverick. As for Jillian Robertson, she exchanges wins and losses. So I kind of think maybe you give her the loser of Carmouche and Porto. So I'll go with that for... That's what should be next for Jillian Robertson. Jillian Robertson's looking like a fighter that is heading into the gatekeeper territory at this point. She is won two out of her last five. That's not great territory. But she's going to maybe need to start getting... She, but she is going to need a win in her next fight. So I do think... So I do think I will give her the loser of Lipsky and De La Rosa. The loser of Lipsky and De La Rosa is what should be next for Jillian Robertson. And in the opener of the main card, Jamie Malarkey pulls a big upset of Karma Worthy with a first round knockout. And this knockout likely uh, saves Jamie Malarkey from getting cut from the promotion. What could be next for Jamie Malarkey? Malarkey ranked 88 according to Tapology. I think probably a fight for him next should be the undefeated Jordan Levitt. That's what should be next for him. And as for Karma Worthy, this is a big setback for him. He's lost two in a row now. And this is the type of loss that's probably going to be back to the drawing board for Karma Worthy. And I do think for Worthy, a step down in competition is what should be next for him. I say Roosevelt Roberts is what should be next for him. That would be a good step down for Karma Worthy. That's what I'm going to go with there. On to the prelims. In the catchweight bout at... In the... the, the 
first fight in the big fight of the prelim card, Alonzo Menafield beats Fabio Charant in the first round submission. Next for Menafield, you just rebook him against just rebook him against William Knight. That's what I'm gonna go with that. And then Charant, a debutante. Fight before that at welterweight. Abu Bakr. Nurmagomedov beats Jared Gordon via unanimous decision. Or Jared Gooden, excuse me. What is next for Nurmagomedov? Nurma Gamedov ranked 93 according to Tapology. And I think for him, his next fight should be against Gabe Green. That's what I'm going to go with. And on the loser's side of, of things with Jared Gooden. Jared Gooden, 0-2 in the UFC. And those losses were not even close, so I kind of think the regional circuit is what's likely next for, for Jared Gooden. In the light heavyweight battle before that, Michael Oleksijuk beats, Michal Oleksijuk beats Modestus Bukowskis via split decision. This was a very fun, exciting, close fight. And Michal does avoid getting cut from this with the win tonight. What is next for Lord after the win? Lord ranked 22 according to Tapology. So I think next for him should be the winner of Marquez and yeah, the, the winner of Marquez's Herman is what should be next for Is what should be next for Lord. As for Modestus Bukowskis, I think his next fight should be against. Let's put him up against a debutante. That's what should, should be next for Balkus. The Calcus is a debutante. He's pretty much the low man on the food chain in the one and the 205 division. 
And in the opener of the prelim card, Omar Morales gets back on the winning side of things after beating Shane Young by unanimous decision. This was a good win for Omar Morales, a good young prospect in the UFC. Now 11-1 in his career. Currently ranked 78 according to Tapology. Rebounds after getting after losing to Giga Chikadze, who is exactly not a, is not exactly a, any slouch. But I think for him, the next fight should be against Jamal Emers. That's what should be next for him. And for Chase Young, this is not exactly a good loss for him. He's now 2-3 and three in the UFC. He's lost two in a row, so this is definitely a loss that is back to the drawing board for Shane Young. And now he's starting to fall more into that gatekeeper territory. So that was not exactly a good good win for good loss for Shane Young tonight. I think he take, should take the loser of Ramos and Alego is what should be next for for Shane Young. And in the opener on um, the only er early prelim card yeah, there was only 10 fights tonight, surprisingly. Mark andre Berriolt beats Abu Azatar via TKO. Berriolt looks sharp. Azatar was rusty tonight in this one. And now what should be next for Power Bar? Power Bar now has won two in a row. And is ranked 57 at middleweight. According to Tapology. I think for him next should be the winner of Daukus and and Kizriev. Which will happen next week on in two weeks on Big ABC. And for Azatar, maybe a debutante. Azatar did look rusty after three years, after a three year layoff. So those things happen. Azatar falls to 11 and 4, ranked 62. But yeah, this is just, not being in the octagon for over three years can do that to you. That, that happens. Maybe by getting more, hopefully getting back in the octagon more, we'll see the Azatar that looked great. I don't expect him to be that bad next time. I say next for him should be Roman Delidze. That's what I'm going to go with. And now we will put a bow on UFC 260. And next week, the UFC is off, but the week after that, the UFC will be, we will have UFC returning to big ABC on April 10th with a matinee fight card. The main event will be Darren Till versus Marvin Vittori with huge implications towards, towards the middleweight title. You got Allen, Arnold Allen and Sodiq Youssef, two bright prospects. In the featherweight division, Julian Marquez versus Sam Alvey, Mike Perry versus Daniel Rodriguez, Scott Holtzman versus Mateus Gamrot. But this should be some very fun card, fun fight card coming up in two weeks on Big ABC. And also, the next UFC pay per view will be in Jacksonville with. 
fans at 100% capacity. So I am very intrigued to see how the return of fans is going to be for the next pay-per-view. But, I, but I'm pretty much concluding it for tonight. Everybody have a good Sunday. We will be back tomorrow. I will be back tomorrow to preview the NL West and get ready for baseball season. Good night, everybody.